AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution has come out of hiding and we've had the ability to test it in a number of games. How does AMD's FSR look in comparison to native resolution images? How does it perform? And how does FSR compare to standard temporal upscaling tech like that found in Unreal Engine 4? That is what I'm going to be talking about today in this video, but first let me explain how AMD's FSR works on a conceptual level. Thankfully, AMD has been rather open with its FSR implementation to journalists leading up to this embargoed launch. Fidelity Effect Super Resolution is a single frame spatial image enhancement technique that looks at edges essentially like something like FXAA or MLAA to a degree and resolves those edges smartly into a higher resolution grid. This gives edges a superior look than the standard quote unquote dumb upscalers like bilinear filtering. Looking here at this chart of rendering passes, you can see that FSR inserts into a game's rendering after anti-aliasing is already done and only only works on the current frame. That means FSR does not use high resolution helpers as they're called like geometry rendering might or ID buffers like you can see in some checkerboarding techniques. Rather FSR constrains itself to the information of the current frame and will then inherit image quality characteristics of the game's anti-aliasing technique. So if a game uses TAA like we see in Godfall here, then FSR being on will have the same characteristics as the normal TAA native presentation so it'll get ghosting and things like that. FSR does not replace anti-aliasing, which is different than other image enhancement techniques like NVIDIA's DLSS. Since FSR is also working spatially on a single frame, that means it has potentially less information with which it will enhance the final image. So with this information in mind, let's look at one of the first examples here with Godfall, where I am first running the game in native 4K. It is a very crisp image in this game due to the game's high quality textures, where at native resolution, you can see a lot of texture detail here. And you can also see a lot of native crispness, as I'll call it, in the character's hair or in the trees rustling in the wind in the background. The game is very detail rich. Now let's switch over to the highest quality mode, ultra quality FSR, which runs the game internally at 1662p. Now I think if your eye was looking at any of those higher detailed patches of the game, like the ground texture, the character's hair, or the trees in the background, I think you might have noticed a difference from that pristine quality we saw earlier. Put side by side, Without zooming in, I think the pristineness of the hair, the way the vegetation looks, or the texture detail on the ground right in front of our character is noticeably different. If I didactically zoom in for the purpose of this video, it's easier to explain what differences we're seeing here. Looking at the ground here, we can see the texture detail looks different. FSR is using a single frame searching for edges, so inner surface detail to my eye looks to resolve more or less the same than it might at its internal resolution of 1662p. Looking at the hair, we can see what happens since FSR only uses one frame of information. Hair in video games is made up of tiny detail that moves frame by frame, sometimes in sub-pixel differences. This high frequency detail means lower resolutions cannot capture it as well, which is what I think we're seeing here in this ultra quality mode where there's less detail in the hair than at native resolution. Same thing with the game's vegetation quality. One area that I think fares very well in comparison to native in this ultra quality shot are the edges of opaque geometric objects, like these chains and the rock face in the background. If we look at their edges and not their inner surface detail, we can see a very similar level of edge resolve, as I'll call it, between native and ultra quality. These are the differences in a primarily still shot. In motion, the primary difference is from the amount of shimmering on highly reflective materials like metals, or the amount of shimmering on objects like vegetation or hair. For example, in this shot where the camera is panning side to side, you can look at the metal facets on level geometry and it's possible to see a greater level of flicker or sawtooth edges popping in and out as the camera pans. This macro effect on the FSR side does not require any sort of zooming to highlight as it just is a less stable image. This essentially comes from the fact that FSR is functioning at a lower internal resolution and there are more details which then become smaller than a pixel and pop as the camera moves. This is probably the biggest visible difference when playing the game in FSR if you're not just staring at comparisons. The game just looks rawer and more aliased. So this is the highest quality FSR preset. Now let's go down to the lower ones, starting at quality which runs internally at 1440p.
then Balanced, which runs at 1270p internally. And lastly, the Performance option, which runs at 1080p internally. I think as I've been going down these presets, the concessions to detail for the aspects I mentioned, like texture detail, hair aliasing, and foliage pristineness, become more and more obvious with each preset going down, which I think makes sense. As I say that though, I do think the smoothness of an edge does not degrade as rapidly when going down these presets as the other image quality aspects. So if you look at the edge of the rock face and these chains, I think they look more similar across the various presets in comparison to the tree leaves and branches right below, which more visibly degrade from native at normal viewing distances. These image quality differences that I'm pointing out here in Godfall, I think are very representative of what happens when FSR is active across the breadth of games we have had access to. For example, in Rift Breaker here, let's look at the CPU bench sequence where I'll show ultra quality next to native. If I stop and compare, I think the general impression, even without any zooming in, is that the FSR image does look less sharp. If you were to want to explain that difference in sharpness, you could zoom into the textures and see a difference in texture quality resolve. If you reduce the FSR preset down, you will see that image unsharpness or softness increasing just like we saw in Godfall, where post-processing bloom and other aspects of the image start making it look a bit hazier. The one game where we saw FSR showing off different characteristics was Terminator Resistance, where even at lower FSR presets, it would be a bit hard to say which image is which at times, or exactly what the differences of FSR are in this game. The reasons for that are multiple, but the primary one is that Terminator Resistance is a very dark game with little contrast and low texture detail. This means inner surface differences that happen as a result of SSR being on are mitigated by the game's technical makeup of colors and textures. Similarly, Terminator Resistance is very heavily post-processed with motion blur, chromatic aberration, and depth of field. All of those things obfuscate the image a bit, making different resolution images more similar to one another. So FSR fares well here. FSR differences are most visible instead in transparent geometry like on hair or on fences, which will have noticeably greater shimmering on movement than in the native presentation. Based upon what I am seeing across all these games, and based upon what FSR is as a concept, it looks to be a technique which can make lower resolution images appear to have a greater opaque edge quality. But inner surface detail, thin transparent edges, or moving edges will have lower detail and more shimmering. And the shimmering and lower detail will correspond with the game's real internal resolution. The best case for FSR's effectiveness seems to be in darker low contrast content with a number of post-processing effects, like we saw in Terminator Resistance. This is for the 4K output resolution. With lower output resolutions, differences between FSR and native are magnified as there's less single frame information for FSR to work with. So let's return to Godfall, but at 1440p. Like before here, at ultra quality, surface texture quality, hair edge quality, or moving edges tend to look more degraded in the FSR view, while opaque larger object edges seem more similar between the FSR and native image. But at these lower resolutions, I noticed a new difference in image quality, and that was from post-processing differences. For example, the SSR, I think, resolves rather differently at 1440p in ultra quality mode than at native 1440p due to the amount of shimmer or fizzle in the SSR itself. Same with Bloom, like we can see on the character's armor here, which I think almost has a macro blocking quality in the Bloom not seen in the native resolution image. These image quality differences will increase in their significance as FSR presets go down from ultra quality to quality to balanced and then performance. So that is the general overview of image quality that can be expected at 1440p or 4k. The performance uplift of FSR though will depend of course on the game scene, GPU, and original resolution. But at 4k, we measured a 42% performance increase over native 4k in ultra quality mode, a 75% performance increase in quality mode, a 104% performance increase in balance mode, and a very large 145% performance increase in performance mode here in Rift Breaker in the GPU benchmark on an RX 6800 XT. Those are some very large performance wins, but the question is, are they really worth it for the image quality changes brought on by FSR? In my opinion, based upon what I've seen, other than the ultra quality mode at 4K, I find the image quality changes to be one step too far to be considered similar enough to the native resolution 
as an alternative. That is, unless the game is Terminator Resistance, where the game's post-processing and dark colors make resolution differences less visible overall. So ultra quality at 4K is the sweet spot. This conclusion though leaves FSR in a strange place as I see it. I like where it's going, but I'm not wholly convinced of its comparative quality to native resolution rendering, especially if you compare it to other image enhancement techniques. Take this shot here from King's Hunt. Here I have the game at 1080p using normal bilinear filtering essentially, to bring it up to 4K on the left hand side, and on the right I have AMD's FSR bringing up a 1080p resolution in its performance mode up to 4K. Now if you look at the inner surface texture quality or the moving character's quality with all of its transparent thin elements, I think you will see that FSR is producing an extremely similar image to the one on the left with very basic upscaling. But if you look at the upscaled edge quality, for example, in the tree branches or on the tree's leaves edges or on the trunk, you can see that FSR will mitigate that typical bilinear upscale look. This is what FSR's design is about, I think. Not inner surface quality or aliasing, but identifying edges and not blindly blending between them like a simple upscaler. So FSR is better than standard bilinear, but a lot of games don't just offer bilinear upscaling. Unreal Engine 4 has a temporal AA upscaler in it, for example. So when I put that into this comparison, we can see how that fares at that exact same 1080p resolution going up to 4K. And I think you can see that temporal upscaling produces greatly superior visual results at that same internal resolution. Like look at the character model moving in front of the camera here. All of its thin transparent detail on its crown or the dress is much preserved in comparison to that FSR image. If we look at the inside of surfaces and their textures, we can see TAAU also offering superior results there. If we also look at the edge of the tree trunk, for example, it's possible to see how TAAU also does a better job at edge preservation than FSR because it's anti-aliasing into that higher 4K grid as well. This superiority of basic temporal upscaling is what makes FSR less convincing on a whole, I would say, especially when you consider how TAAU in an Unreal Engine 4 game costs essentially the exact same as FSR. Here, TAAA upsampling requires just a bit more utilization on average of the GPU to hit that same 60 FPS. With that comparison, I think we can come to the end of this video. My conclusion based upon what I have seen with FSR is that it is most useful at 4K in its ultra quality mode, but its utility drops off rather quickly at resolutions and modes lower than that. Conceptually, I think FSR is interesting, but may be outcompeted by other techniques. If a game for some reason only offers basic upscaling, then FSR will definitely do a better job than that. But why must a game only have basic upscaling? Many engines like those from Ubisoft, Unreal, Capcom games, and so on and so forth have some form of TAA upsampling, which will outcompete FSR by their very design. Given that, I question the purpose of a game only offering FSR and not FSR and TAA upsampling, especially since it is becoming more common on games on PC. For example, Godfall on PC for some reason does not use UE4's TAAU, even though it is a simple engine command in the console. And instead, there's only FSR here on offer. Would you not also prefer if TAAU was there, given its quality? That conclusion aside, we're just looking at FSR here in its version 1.0, which is limited to this spatial filter. I would imagine it will change over time, much like we've seen with other competing image enhancement techniques in the past. But that is enough for me for now. If you did enjoy this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, then hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to help us out, support DF on Patreon to get years of our work available in the highest quality for download. If you want to talk to me about FSR, write a comment below or follow me and DF on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen.